was younger, I'd go visit my grandparents' house all the time. They lived in a one-floor house with an unfinished basement. I never liked it down there. It felt small for a big basement. There was a little door down there that was for storage, and I always got a horrible feeling when I got close to it. And let me add that this was a newer house that was about six years old. Now during the time I was about six or seven, I felt so uncomfortable going down there. Even when I was with someone, I didn't like it. I remember going down there with my grandma to help with something one day. She had to run upstairs because someone rang the doorbell. She said she would be right back, even though she knew how I felt about being alone down there. But I nodded and I said, okay. So she was gone and I was alone and I started to get a really bad feeling in the pit of my stomach. I didn't move and I didn't want to, even though the lights were on now. This is where everything started happening and it still gives me the chills to this day. The lights started to flicker and I started to hear noises and what sounded like talking and it was not coming from upstairs. It was coming from the storage room. I heard someone say my name, and here's the part that freaks me out the most. The voice sounded like my grandma. I was confused as to how I was hearing her down here when she is upstairs. I didn't want to move, but I was the curious one, and I started moving towards the storage room door. The closer I got, the worse the bad feeling came. When I got to the door, the lights turned off in the basement. I wanted to run upstairs and hide. Go somewhere that wasn't the basement. I heard my name again for the second time. My grandma's voice again, asking me to open the door to help her. So I did, and I regret it. I couldn't see anything. It was pitch black. I couldn't hear anything but faint laughter that felt like forever. But then the laughing stopped and the lights turned back on in the basement and I felt a little better with the lights back on, but the downside was that I could see a little into the storage room. I saw a small clown doll in the storage room and my grandma hates clowns with a passion wants nothing to do with them. So why was there a clown doll here? I have no idea. Then the lights turned on in the storage room and I saw red that looked like blood all over the place. I screamed and blacked out and the next thing I knew I was lying on the couch. My grandma looking at me and asking if I was okay. I have no idea if that was real or a dream, but to this day, it felt very real. Before I begin, I want to put down some basic facts about my story. I was 13 at the time of this occurrence and had been reading creepypastas and true stories since I was 11. I live in Carroll Island, a place where you can find a good amount of forestry everywhere. This was located in Baltimore County, and I loved hearing Goatman stories about this place. I believe there's one in Carroll Island, but that's not the point. I loved this bit of forestry, and had always since when I was a child. I had lived in this house, and I still do, since I was about seven or eight. These forests, like any other town, always had some urban legend behind them. Some of these were mostly told by older kids who were trying to scare some younger kids who would wander about the streets. The teens would always go into the woods to smoke pot and have some alcohol. I was outside of my house sometime near January, on a full moon. I can't recall which month perfectly. 
I just know that there was a full moon. This was when some of the clown occurrences were starting to die off. You know, people coming out and dressing up like clowns and trying to scare other people. But like I said, it was starting to die off. But then it came back in April of 2017. I never really believed in them, and I still don't. But that night, I think I did. I walked inside my house with my brother and my friend who we'll call Kyle. Kyle was from the Dominican Republic and had always believed in the paranormal. So we had a good bit in common. We walked into my brother's room, since it was the largest, and were watching Logan Paul's controversial suicide forest video. Once it was done, Kyle remembered it was a full moon and that the clowns were out tonight. I called him out on it, and I told him it was all a hoax and insane people on the highways trying to scare other people. He threatened me by saying that if I didn't believe, they'd get me. I laughed at his remark to that, and I told him to stop believing in all that stuff. That's when my brother, who I'll call Josh, sat up and said that I was a coward. I told him he was a jerk and that I didn't think it was funny. We got into a conversation for a good 10 minutes. When Kyle finally says, then why don't you go prove it? I said, okay, and told them that I would be back. I know just the place to prove it. There was a little place down the road that was put there for a park essentially. It wasn't funded. The only thing it had was a small walk bridge that was pretty nice. We called it Duck Pond, but it was actually called Seneca Creek. I'm giving all the location details to give you a better understanding of how scary this place would have been at night. I had left the house, got on my bike, and rode off two blocks away by myself. At the entrance of the park is another set of woods that is private property for houses on the water and some abandoned houses inside. The entrance is easy to see. You can't miss it. And personally, it looks very pretty. As I was walking up to the entrance, I had noticed a foul odor. Keeping in mind that this is wildlife, where things die and decompose right here, it wasn't helped with the stench of trash reeking from the trash island. I was about to walk into the park when I kid you not, something had spoken in a low, somewhat luring voice. Hey there, kiddo. Why don't you come over here? This is when I went into full panic mode. I'm someone who isn't scared off so easily, but it was the thought that it could be someone out there. The unknown. I turn towards a small patch of bushes near the entrance, and I see something crouched over, deep in the bushes, facing me. I couldn't tell if it was a clown, or a demon. I didn't really care at this point. Even thinking about it is making me paranoid, what with Kyle telling me that it's clown night and all. I was going to man up and go see what it was, but it spoke again. That's right, come over here. And I hear the sheathing of a blade. That's when I knew it was time to book it. I instantly wailed out in fright and crashed into that bike. If I hadn't been riding for many years and built up muscle to power out of there, I would have been done. I floor it back to my house and at this point my body is in complete hysteria. And Kyle said that once I opened the door, I was not comprehensible. It took me a minute to calm down and realize that I shouldn't be so scared. I explained to Kyle and Josh what had just happened, and we agreed to go back tomorrow and mess up whoever was there. But we never did, and I never go there at night. Creepy man in the bushes, whoever you are, if you're still out there, let's not meet again.